حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل 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 بسم الله الحمد لله السلام عليكم وكم باك تو ذا دين شو Today we're tackling a very, another very important topic. And before we introduce the topic, we're going to introduce our guest. He's been lecturing since 1989 here in the U.S. And he's finished coming in from Egypt, Al Azhar, it's a university, Islamic university down there. His name is Ibrahim Dermali. Mr. Ibrahim, Sheikh, Mr. Mr. <laughs> Sheikh Ibrahim Dermali, welcome to the show, the Dean Show. So, Ezhar, just let the people know who you are. You memorize, you're a memorizer of Quran. Alhamdulillah. Okay, meaning that he's memorized this whole verbatim word of God, the Quran, last and final revelation by God. Then you memorize the authentic traditions, once said Buhari, right? Yes. And then you know the the Islamic jurisprudence, you're a scholar in that, right? Alhamdulillah. So, you got some experience. Since 1989, you've been here lecturing? In, in America. Year? Did I say 1989 is correct? In America, yes. Okay. So we get it now into this topic. Check this out. We go to the masjid, and we hear this wonderful lecture. brings tears to our eyes. You know, we get really connected with Allah. Man, but then we walk out to the dunya, and, and, and just bam, here, bam. Your, head, your eyes are down, but everywhere you look, it's like a fitna, like a trial. And you, you feel like locking yourself in a closet, because anywhere you look, it's temptation. And this is for us now, people that are practicing the deen, having such a hard time, and you feel guilty at times because you're making mistakes. Okay? Now, we can imagine some of the youth out there that are battling everywhere you go. You got the MTV, and you got the, and you got the music, and you got the, the uh, Hollywood, Bollywood as I call it. You know, all, these, all this entertainment. So a kid, he gets drawn into this, even adults, us also. And now you carry this, this sin, right? And you feel like, man, I made so many more mistakes, there's no hope. So you indulge more in your passions and you turn more away from God. What advice do you give us for this? For us as human beings, we're weak, we make mistakes. Help us this, now with this topic. With this. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. First, we have to understand we are human beings. We're not an angels. This is number one. We're not the prophets. This is number two. We are human beings. And the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in authentic hadith, he said والذي نفسي بيده the one he swear by Allah the one he control his soul Allah سبحانه وتعالى. لو لم تذنبوا if you don't make mistakes, if you don't committing a sin, لذهب الله بكم. Allah سبحانه وتعالى will take you away, completely will take you away. ولجاء بقوم يذنبون فيستغفرون الله فيغفر لهم. If you don't make mistakes, if you don't commit any sin, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will take you away and bring a nation or people, those people committing mistakes or making sin. And those people, they ask Allah for forgiveness, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to understand something very important here. We are human beings, and our job in this life to worship Allah. But impossible you're going to worship Allah without making mistakes. Only the prophets and the angels, they are not making those mistakes. But we as a human being, we have here a fight with the shaitan. We have a war with the shaitan. Yes, as you know, we will go to the masjid and then you listen to the lecture, lecture and tears come out of your eyes and you start to cry and you will say, oh, that's it, I will never make any mistake. Impossible. We have to make mistakes. Even the Sahaba themselves, Radwanullah Ta'ala Alayhim, they used to make mistakes, committing sin. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, I make istighfar day and night 100 times. He asked Allah for forgiveness, istighfar, for day and night. For a hundred times every day, imagine we're talking about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we have to understand something very important. You never know when you will die. You never know if you are going to die this moment or not. Or maybe you think you are a young, you think you are a youth, 
but you don't think that this will come to you any moment, then we have to prepare ourselves. By the way, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give you some kind of bright in the face, brightness in the brain, brightness in the tongue, brightness in front of you, behind you, your right side, your left side, always you see the guidance. If you are connected with Allah, you obey Allah. If you don't, if you disobey Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything dark. Dark in front of you, dark in the brain, dark in the eyes, dark in every place you see. And also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you ask Allah, if you don't have this kind of connection with Him, Allah not subhanahu wa ta'ala not going to accept your prayer. You know what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about the story about the people of Musa alayhi salam, Moses alayhi salam. They have a drought season, very bad drought season. And this drought season, Musa alayhi salam collecting and gathering 70,000, 70,000 people praying for Allah to send the rain to them. And then they are praying, Musa alayhi salam ask Allah to send the rain by those old people, all men, all women, by the animals, everybody start to die in the people of Israel. And as far as he's making dua, still the sun become more hot and there is no more clouds. And Musa asked Allah, Oh Allah, you ask me to make dua, and I make dua. I ask about all the names you want, I ask you, but still we don't have any rain. What you do, Oh Allah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Oh Musa, I prevent the rain because one among those 70,000 among you disobey me since 40 years. 40 years this man, he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I said, what did you do? I said, call those people for this man to get out of the crowd. Musa said, oh Allah, how do you want my voice to reach 70,000? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam, you make the dua, you make the call, and I make everybody hear it. Musa alayhi salam, he said, oh, the one, he called the one, the one he, you disobey Allah for since, since 40 years, disobey Allah, get out of the crowd, because Allah prevent the rain to come down because of you, because of your sin, your mistakes. And the man, he looked around, no one got out of the crowd. And he told himself, definitely that's me. He was afraid. So he hid himself in his clothes. And he asked Allah, oh Allah, I disobey you for 40 years. And now, and you forgive me. Or uh, uh, not forgive me. And you give, give me a chance to make repentance now. Oh Allah, I came to you. I come to you with repentance. Accept my tawbah. Otherwise, everybody will die, and I will die. But I come to you with a complete tawbah and repentance. Before even the man finished the statement, Allah sent a very dark cloud and, and sent the rain to the people of Israel. And Musa -Islam said, Oh Allah, you send the rain without anybody left the crowd. And he said, Oh Musa, I send the rain because of the one I prevent the rain before. And he said, What happened? And see, he came to me with tawbah, with repentance. And the sincere tawbah and sincere repentance, that's why I send the rain. And Musa said, show me that obedient servant. I want to see him. I want to see him. And Allah said, Do you want, I, I protect him when he was disobeying me. You want me to slander him when he's obeying me now? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the gates of the tawbah every day. Every second in our life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the gate of the tawbah. Go back to him, do not, never give up. Never give up from the tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yaghfiru al-dudubah jami'ah illa yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dharika liman yasha. Allah forgive all kind of sin. All kind of sin if, except if you make associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make sin, ask for forgiveness. But listen, do not challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you never know when you're going to die. You never know when the angel of death will come to you. So always be connected with him. Ask him for forgiveness. Because he always, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his name, the forgiving one. Uh, go with Allah and Allah always will be with you. All right, we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and ask you, uh, pick your brain and ask you a few more questions if you don't mind. Inshallah. Inshallah. Stay tuned. Salam alaikum.
Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome back to the Dean Show. We're here with Sheikh Ibrahim Dermali, who is a scholar in Islamic studies, finished at Azhar University. Azhar, am I saying that right? Al Azhar. Az Azhar, he's a uh, memorizer of the Quran and also Hadith. So now, we're talking about making mistakes. Man, we're making a lot of them. Every day we're making mistakes, on and on. And sometimes we feel ashamed because we're making so many mistakes. We ask for forgiveness, but then again we make the same mistake again. Then again we ask for forgiveness. We have the intention to stop. All right. Some of us are stopping quicker than the others. So how about now? Sometimes we're embarrassed now to come back to God, to Allah, to say, "Look, after you asked Him already two hundred times, you know, I'm sorry." I'm so then again, back again. So what? Do you, what happens here? Uh, that is actually what he just mentioned is there is a hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the man make the mistake and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him and he do the same mistake and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him and on the same mistake the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even thinks you ten times and more and it's still as far as that person going with the sincere tawbah repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him but the issue is not challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that Yes, we are human beings, we make the mistakes over and over as the mention in the Hadith of Sayyid Muslim. But we have to understand something also. You don't want to die while you are making that sin because you'll be resurrected and facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that sin before, even if this happened before the tawbah, before the repentance. So just keep making mistakes. I mean, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> keep making repentance. Right, exactly. Not mistakes, repentance. Repent. And if you're making the mistakes, just keep repenting. That is correct. Keep trying, trying. Do, do your best. Do your best not to make those mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Taghabun, Allah Fear Allah as much as you can. Fear God as much as you can. We have uh, a guest also, a uh, former Christian. You accepted Islam how many years ago, brother? Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Yeah. Brother Yusuf brought him on. He had a special question for the Shaykh. Go ahead, take it away. Uh, my question is maybe two part because I uh, reverted to Islam. But tell us before also real quick and short, what captured you about Islam? Why did you accept Islam? Then give him a question. Okay, to make it real short, uh, I came to Islam, I was a Christian. Then I was basically nothing. <laughs> I didn't have any belief. My whole thing is once I learned about Islam, the connection that I had from Christianity, it, it almost fit. To, to explain what Christianity wasn't telling me. Yeah. So through that and, you know, Dawah, yeah. I uh, came to Islam. Through what? Through that and, you know, so and then What was the word you said? So if you explain that word, so just the people that don't, you said Dawah? The Dawah, which is the propagation, people telling you about Islam and, and making you understand. People explaining it to you and it fitting with your intellect and your heart and you right. said, okay, so go ahead with the right. question now. So my question, and I, and I said it might be two part. One is, we're talking about some sins coming out and seeing this and seeing that. Yeah. But what about the people who, uh, you know, maybe I've, maybe I've done something heinous, and I feel like that this won't be forgiven, you know. Or maybe I've done a succession of severe uh, sins. That's the first part. The second one would be maybe I did those sins and then I repented, but I'm feeling like it's so bad that it could never be forgiven. So if, if, if she could expand on that. Uh, actually, one man was sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that man was crying. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, his, no, his name Abdullah ibn Jahsh, he said, why are you crying? He said, oh Messenger of Allah, I cried before the Islam. I left my wife pregnant. When I came back, I found my wife, she had, after seven years, she had a baby girl. In that time, before the Islam, when someone had a, a baby girl, they used to bury her alive, before the Islam. When the Islam came, prohibited that. The, the Islam make a value, make the women so valuable. And, and they said, tell me what happened. And the Prophet, uh, the man, he telling the Prophet وسلم, when he came, he saw his daughter, seven years, beautiful. And he told his wife, get her dress and let me take her with me. The, my wife, she know very well that I will kill my daughter. And I took my daughter to the area where there is a, a very deep well and that water, there is no water in the well. And I was looking at my daughter and I feel some kind of love and sympathy. 
and I look on at the will and I remember when she grew up she would get married or make it, committing adultery or fornication between this both and I took my daughter and I threw her inside the well. And my daughter started to cry and cry and cry until, and she said to me, Oh my dad, fear Allah, why you have done something like this? And, since, and he telling the Prophet وسلم, every time I remember this, I just cry. And the Prophet وسلم, he was crying himself and say, if there is any penalty before the Islam, for someone did anything before the Islam, I will have the penalty, death penalty for you. But the Islam revealed or erased all the sin before. Another part of the question, said so there is a hadith in Sayyid Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said there is one man from the past, from the people of Israel, he killed 99 souls, 99 persons he killed. And he went to the monk and asked the monk, I killed 99 souls. Do you think there is any repentance? Is Allah will accept my repentance? And the monk told him no. And he killed the monk. After a while he felt so sorry. Just like what you say. So sorry. He went to the scholar. He searched and he found. He searched and he looked. And he found the scholar. And he told the scholar, I killed 100 people. Do you think if I go to Allah, Allah will accept my repentance? And he said, what will prevent you prevent Allah to, if you ask Allah for repentance, what do you think will Allah stop not giving you the repentance? So the repentance is opened. But he told him this. He told him, leave that land, the one you killed 100 people in it, leave it and go to this certain area, another city, another village. There is in that village, there is a people worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the man, he left his city, his village, and he went to that village and he died in the middle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him in the paradise. Why? Because that person, number one, we have to, he left all that bad city behind him. And he went with his face to the good city. So what do we have to do in this situation? In, you want to leave the past behind you? Go to the future. Go to the future and that is the good city. Be among the people worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the scholar told him you'll find people worship Allah with them. So always the tawbah, the repentance is open. We always make the mistakes. What happens now if a guy says, okay, look, that where's the fairness? Now we understand this, that the door to repentance with God Almighty Allah is always open. But for the other person on the flip side, Muslim or non-Muslim, because God says, Allah says in the Quran, killing one innocent being Absolutely. is if you kill the world. Absolutely. Okay? So now for the other person, let's say myself, it's that individual killed my family member, let's say, robbed my family, raped, you know, God forbid, one of my family members. Now he turns around, okay, I still have this vengeance I, to prevent the justice. How is the justice served? I don't know, maybe he's gone, after, I never see him again, he fleds, but he goes to another city, he repents, changes life around, what about me now? I still want this justice, what happened? Uh, it's happened. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the one he killed his uncle Hamza in the battle of Uhud, his name Wahshi. Wahshi became a Muslim. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told him, you know, and not only he killed his uncle, and, but Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, I, I, I have something in my heart toward you. But please, I don't want to see really your face more often. What you have, Allah Azza wa Jal said, the best place in the paradise, in the Jannah, say, وَالْقَادِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ قَادِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ You hold the anger inside you and to be forgiven one. And the forgiveness and the most important thing and the highest level in the Jannah, in the paradise with the Prophet, when the one he forgives, and it is in your hand to take the revenge. So, you want to prefer this life or you prefer the paradise? If you pre prefer the life, go and take the revenge, but you lose. But if you prefer the paradise, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with this. So this is also showing the mercy of Islam. Absolutely. That Islam is not a revengeful way of life, religion that encourages God Almighty, encourages us to have mercy on each other, to have forgiveness. Absolutely, yes. And there's always 
the door for tawbah, repentance, is always open. No matter how much sin you've committed, there's always hope. Absolutely, but you have to have sincere tawbah, repentance to Allah. What are, what are those conditions, real quick? Now, As, number one, you have to admit the tawbah. You have to admit the, the, the sin. Yeah, that you have to uh, you have to admit that you're committing this sin. Yeah. Number two, you have to stop and be away from that sin. Number three, you have to sincere tawbah to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Number four, do something good. Start doing good. Absolutely. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So unlike say other ways of life where say you have to have someone pay this like the Christian belief that Jesus Esau Islam Jesus Christ that he is the ultimate sacrifice the lamb now for our sins okay in Islam God is the most just he doesn't need somebody to come and die for our sins he forgives sins absolutely in Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Allah Allah forgive all kind of sin Except if you meet associate, that is not forgiven. Other than that, is always forgiven. Ask Allah, Allah always will be with you, inshallah. So what you're saying, associate, meaning if you set up partners with Almighty God, Allah, if you call upon other, if you worship His creation instead of Him, this is partners, what you say. This is what He doesn't forget. So if you're worshiping a man, Jesus Christ, for instance, who we love, but he's a mighty messenger, he's not God. If you're worshipping him, this is so associating part. He doesn't forget. If you're worshipping Muhammad, for instance, you same thing. Only God. If you're worshiping Muhammad if you, and Jesus. If you're worshipping a rock, okay? Some people do that, don't they? All right, there's a lot of people do yeah. that. So if you're worshipping any part of the creation, this is setting up associates so people can understand. That's correct. But other than that, God Almighty can forgive. Absolutely, yes. May Allah forgive all of us. May He forgive all of us. Allahumma inna nas'aluka imanan da'ima wa qalban khashi'a wa yaqeenan sadiqa ya arhamar rahim. Ameen, ameen. Yes, we all make mistakes and in this series we try to show you that the door to the creator of the heavens and the earth and Islam is always open. Always. But you got to be plugged in. You got to be communicating. You have to be dialing up directly. Thank you, Shaykh, for being with us. Thank you, Brother Yusuf, for being with us. Thank you for being with us on The Dean Show. You can visit us 24-7, www.thedeanshow.com. We have free Quran on there. You can read other testimonies of people that come to this way of life from all different parts of the world. Drop us a line with any comments, suggestions. We'll see you again on The Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.